Hi, I'm Alice. I'm 17 years old, and the strangest thing happened to me. Once. I've never had anything worse happen in my life. Here's how it all happened. Before an important date, I buy a new dress, but Joe invited me to the water park, so I went out for a new swimsuit. Joe was not my boyfriend yet, but he was extremely popular at school, and I wanted to impress him. Since the date at the water park didn't imply deep conversation, I decided to focus on something else. I chose the most expensive swimsuit, which was held together using the smallest amount of fabric possible. There were a lot of people that day, and it seemed like everyone was looking at me in my little swimsuit. If only I had known that I would really be drawing their attention. Soon, Joe and I were in the jacuzzi when he suggested we go on the tallest, steepest slide. Now, I have never skydived or bungee jumped. I don't like scary rides or even driving at high speed. That's what I should have told him. Instead, I decided to play along and agreed. So I ended up on this slide for suicidal people. Joe went first and I just couldn't make up my mind. You just need to slide down and pretend that you like it, I told myself. There were 10 year old boys behind me in line, waiting. They began to rush me, and I turned around and shouted at them that I would jump when I was ready and no sooner. Then one of them pushed me, and I slid down. It was ridiculously fast and scary. I emerged from the water like a cat that had been thrown into a bath against its will. I wanted to get out of the pool quickly, but unbelievably, I didn't have my swimsuit on. That traitorous swimsuit, which already took up too little space on my body, had disappeared. I looked around, but it was nowhere to be seen. The water was too clear and I couldn't stay there in that state. I cringed and swam to a bubbling pool nearby to hide under its bubbles while I decided what to do next. I had to find Joe and, no matter how embarrassing it was, ask him to help me. I looked around again and saw Abby from another class. Of course she would be here, I thought. We hadn't spoken in more than a year, and I knew that she liked Joe. By the way, the swimsuit that she chose was even smaller than mine. Although, who was I to judge? At least she was in a swimsuit. Again, I tensed my whole body and hid behind the bubbles, bashfully. But then I saw Joe. He was talking to Abby! Did he really not care where I went? It would have been nice to get offended and leave, but how would I do that? So I began waving my hands and calling him to ask to give me at least a towel, but he didn't hear me. I was struggling to hold back tears when some boys on the other side of the pool caught my attention. They were the ones who pushed me. They were laughing out loud and very excited about something. They were trying my top on themselves. Hey you! Don't touch that! I shouted at them, but when they saw me, they took off with the top of my swimsuit. Where were their parents? I was sure that it couldn't get any worse, but no, it could. Some guy walked up and started hitting on me. Hi, can I keep you company? This pool is only for those who have lost their swimsuits, I muttered. What? I said no! I need a towel and dry clothes, but definitely not company! But the guy was not at all deterred by my unfriendly tone, and he began his pickup attempts. That's the kind of no that means yes. I'm getting in. He sat on the edge of my jacuzzi and started putting his legs in. No! He looked at me like a crazy person. It's just that my boyfriend is coming. He's the jealous type. I, I don't want there to be any trouble. Oh, I got it. I'm out. Sorry. <sighs> Phew. I had finally gotten rid of him. But I was so upset that I just kept talking, even after the guy had walked away. Why didn't I ask him to help me? Was it already closing time? I was surprised that the water park had become noticeably quieter. No, no, no! Anything but this! But the silence wasn't because the park was closing. It was just that the bubbling jets in my pool had suddenly stopped. Anyone nearby could have easily seen me sitting there in my compromised state. Suddenly out of the silence came the distinct sound of Abby's voice. 
I looked in her direction. She was walking with friends. Joe wasn't with them. They were walking right towards me! God, were they going to see me? Why me? The whole school would surely know about this by tomorrow. I wondered how much the water distorted my physique. Maybe something small looked big. There had to be at least some positive in this shameful situation. <laughs> what was I thinking? Oh no, she was very close. Now she... <sighs> yes, yes! Bubbles, you're back! How I missed you! I dived headlong into the pool, and when I surfaced, Abby and her friends were gone. How I longed to be able to move freely around the water park in clothes! How long had I been sitting there? I had never spent so much time in water in my life. Suddenly, an employee of the water park approached me. Uh, how long have you been sitting here? What time is it now? He said, 8 p.m. In that case, four hours? I looked at him and noticed that in his hands, besides a towel, was my swimsuit. And I thought I was embarrassed before. What's your name, darling? Alice. So, Alice, I'm going to put the swimsuit and towel, nice and neat right here, and walk away. Shh. We'll pretend we didn't see anything. Slowly, he began moving away from the bubbling pool, which I had been sitting in for four hours. <sighs> when I did get out, I immediately checked my phone and found a bunch of missed calls from Joe, but I didn't call him back. His sympathy was even less reliable than my swimsuit. I look back now and laugh about what happened. It's actually kind of funny. And that's all. Thank you for listening to my story. Hi everybody, my name is Dave and I am 19. I am currently facing a very difficult decision, and I don't know what to do. While browsing the internet, I came across an interesting blog. In it, the girl wrote about her feelings, concerns, and things going on around her. I spent all night reading her posts, and with each new sentence, I realized how cool she was. The very next day, I decided to write her. It was an incredibly difficult wait for her to answer. For a while, I was convinced that she was too good for me, and compared to her, I was a real loser whom she would simply ignore. How glad I was, then, when she actually responded to me. We started a correspondence, and every day I fell more and more in love with her. We talked about books, discussed movies, music, and shared our feelings and dreams. This was the first person in my life whom with I could feel free and at ease. Her name was Jess. She had some nature images as her avatar. Hmm, there was not a single image of her face. I asked her to send me a photo of herself, but in response, I got a lot of excuses. She said she liked that our relationship was based on emotional closeness, and that photos would ruin it. I didn't care what she looked like. Even I, myself, was a little afraid that she wouldn't like me. In one of my messages, I told her that I wanted to meet her, but she answered very abruptly. Meeting in person is not such a good idea, and besides, I have been wanting to be alone for many years now. I had no idea what she meant by this. I started asking, but she stopped replying. After a few days, Jess deleted her blog. I thought that all was lost and that I had ruined everything. But then, I caught sight of a postcard that Jess had sent me for Christmas. With trembling hands, I began to rummage through a pile of my stuff and found an envelope that I had not thrown out by sheer luck. Her address was written on it. I doubted for a very long time whether I should, but eventually decided to go to it. I packed up and ran out of the house, without telling anyone. I raced to the neighboring city to see her. I didn't know why she would be so offended, but I was prepared to apologize for every word. Standing on the porch of her house, using all my strength to make a fist, I knocked. An old woman opened the door. I want to see Jess, I said in a trembling voice. Grandma, who is it? I heard her voice, was delighted, and without permission ran into the corridor. Then I went numb. Standing before me was Jessica and her sister. 
they were conjoined twins. I am ashamed to admit it, but I was scared. I ran out into the yard and just stood there for a very long time, not knowing what to do. Some time passed since then, but I still can't get Jess out of my head. I am very ashamed that I ran away when we first met, and I want to apologize, but at the same time, I am afraid to see her again because I don't know how to behave in front of her. Guys, tell me, what would you do if you were me?